Father, we lift up your daughter, Reverend Michelle, and Lord, we just pray for a fresh anointing on her, Lord, as she brings your word to us. And Lord, we just pray that it'll, your, your words through her will fall on fertile soil as we, as we hear your, your uh, voice and we hear your words. And Lord, we just pray that we will not just be hearers, but we will be doers of the word. Bless Reverend Michelle. Bless her, Lord. Give us strength in her body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, we are hungry for you. We are desperate for you. Oh God, you heard the cries of those yesterday. They want more. Father, they just were so blessed to be able to publicly declare that they belong to you. Father, we ask that your word today will feed us and help us and equip us so that we can face the trials and tribulations of tomorrow, that we will be a church that you are preparing to be without spot and wrinkle, that we are a church that will answer the call of Jesus Christ biblically without fear of man, Lord, we are asking you to help us. We come before you today, and through the power of your word, we thank you that you will transform us and our families. God, the only way forward is through transformation that can only come through your Holy Spirit. It is a work of the Spirit, and we are here today, and we are grateful, O oh God, for the opportunity to be here and to receive and to go and share what we have learned with others in Jesus mighty name amen and amen and while for now this will be the final part of this message that concerns an entity a principality referred to in the scripture all the way from Genesis to Revelation that affects churches, families, that entity, that principality, the Jezebel principality. We want to know what are the footprints of Jezebel that, is, that are upon the church that we need to recognize so that we will not step into those footprints that we will recognize so that in our families we will not allow it so the message is a continuation i will say at this point a final if there's anything i haven't completed i will upload it separately to you to be part of a part four but today we are going to pause after today on this message of the Jezebelic footprints that must be erased from the church. I plead with you not to simply let it go in one ear and come out the next. Many of you want help in your families and your marriages, but you will not listen to these messages and begin to say, are there footprints of Jezebel in my family in the church where I am, so that I will know how to strategically pray, starting with myself. I more or less ended last week with the footprint of false humility and submission. And I referred to Moses Every single time God went to Moses, he had an excuse as to why he could not answer the call to go back into Egypt to be able to be part of setting the Israelites free. He resisted, he said, he couldn't speak, he was fearful. I went through about, I think it was about two or three points, but I'm going to give you the scripture. Exodus 2, Moses was a highly educated man. 
having been taught in Pharaoh's palace as one of his sons, yet when God comes to call him to go and set his people free, he gives excuses and it goes on in three to four. He resisted. He resisted to the point where God got angry because he kept coming up with reasons why he should not be the one. You know when in church we say, there is a task for someone to do to serve God's people. And we come up with the reason, I'm not that person. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not good enough. I'm letting you know that is the imprint of Jezebel. Because I'm here to let you know, God knew that somebody, he knew that somebody was Moses that had to go back and speak to Pharaoh. And, and Moses continued to resist. And God continued to push back. For example, he felt, nobody will listen to me. I have no kind of authority. Nobody will listen to me. If you go and you read from Exodus 2 to Exodus 4, you will read all the excuses. For example, in Exodus 3.11, he said, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Who am I? Who am I that I should be an intercessor in this church and make an effort to pray for the church? Who am I? that I should be on the worship team. I mean, God gave me a voice to sing, but you know, I don't think I'm ready because you know, I'm not spiritual enough. Who am I to agree that, you know, there's help that's needed to serve God's people. God wanted him to go to serve his people and to set his people free through God's power. And Moses continued to make excuses. Saints, you know why I know the church of Jesus Christ is full of false humility and false submission? Because the laborers are few, and this is not the only church. The laborers are few. The laborers are few. There are many who are crying out, who need help. And God has raised up enough people because God knows exactly what God is doing. He took one man, Moses. He sent Aaron with him because Moses said, you know, I can't speak to bring out millions of people out of Egypt. Two people. And I want us to apply that to today. Lest we think Moses was the only one guilty. In churches that are small like this, I can't speak for others, but they are bigger churches. If we continue to use excuses as to why we can't serve God's people, we are guilty of what Moses was doing. And that is Jezebel's strategy because the plan of Satan is to wear down the saints. So what will happen is the ones who are giving and giving and giving are getting tired and tired and tired. And God is keeping them. But God is saying, God is calling his people, all his people to be the church. No big set of things you have to do. But if all of us did something, you will see how the people of God will walk in more power and more authority because they must be served and fed and, and strengthened and loved because of the things that we are all facing. We need each other to help each other. And so I want you to know that just being silent and laid back may be okay in the beginning when you're getting used to what church community is. But at the end of the day, what happens is that God's plan for his church slows down and those who he has already raised begin to feel worn out and tired. But for God, God keeps his people but I want to remind you, when you go back and you read about Paul and the apostles, 
they suffered. They suffered. There is a suffering in the stretching. But please God, that the stretching will not so increase because some do not want to be stretched at all. I want you to reflect on this because we must bring the word back to us today. We are not going into Egypt, but Egypt is among us. And God calls us to go into Egypt and answer the call. There is a tossing and an instability that the Jezebel entity brings to the church and to families. Ephesians 4.14 says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. We should no longer be children tossed to and fro. Jezebel knows that in order for us to be able to stand and to withstand her evil spirits, we need to be stable. Stable. This entity, when Jesus accuses the church of Tharatira of, of tolerating Jezebel, if we tolerate this kind of instability, one minute you're one way, next minute you're next way. Your emotions do this, you go so. It does this, you go so. You hear some new thing out there, it becomes your focus. You begin to focus on the gifts that God is pouring out on you are not, God has said, and I just want to remind people, this church and many others, but I speak for this one, the mandate is to raise an army of fruitful, obedient disciples. That's character and fruit. We are not hung up on gifts. We know gifts come from God. But we know how many ministries and people have led people astray because they've been gifted with poor character and a lack of knowledge of the word of God. And I want you to know that it is the word of God that will keep you stable. And it is your desire for fruit and character in your life to come forth fruit of the spirit that will keep you from being tossed to and fro. Jezebel will continually be bringing new so-called doctrines across our paths that are very appealing to our emotions. Remember Ephesians 6, 10 to 12 tells us that, verse 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities of which Jezebel is one, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is the war. This is who we are against. This is who is against us. So we cannot fight it with carnal means. And carnal is, you feel this way so you act this way. Carnal is, it's too difficult and too hard so you just back right off. It's a war. The enemy does not stop. He continues to come as you are seeing in, in families, Christian families that are not reflecting the love of God. As you are seeing in the churches where gossip and division and confusion is more rampant than the word of God. You know why I'm, I could say that? Because if gossip and confusion proliferate or increase in a church, it means God's word has to be decreasing. You cannot preach God's word and have gossip and confusion. It is not possible. You may be speaking what is in the Bible, but you are not teaching the word of God. You are not using the sword the way it's supposed to. Any church that preaches the true, unadulterated word of God could never have gossip and confusion because God's word will not allow it. So there, if there's an increase, if there's an increase, whichever church it is, there are those who will listen to this message at some other time. If there's an increase of gossip and confusion in your families, if there is drama all the time, the word of God is lacking in your families. I don't care how much you pray. You could pray all you want. Something is wrong because the word of God is like a double-edged sword, severing the soul, the spirit, the bone, and the marrow. And when your families know the truth, the truth will set them free. When they know the truth in church, the truth will set them free. 
So I want us to understand that if we are not firmly established in the word of God or in truth, we will be easily swayed and become confused. And that is one of the characteristics of Jezebel, to confuse families, to confuse the church. We must be aware or beware. Aware of this particular scheme I'm about to tell you. Beware of just going with the flow of what you listen to on YouTube or what you see playing out around you. You've got to test everything against the word, including those who come to gossip. You know how you'll know? Test what they're saying with the word of God. Because anytime someone comes to say something that they say God has showed them, God will never send them to tell somebody something that uncovers somebody's sin. Hear me carefully. I am not here to tell you that God's, God does not expose sin, but God does not send people to tell other people about something about somebody that leaves them exposed and naked. God might reveal it for you to hush your mouth and pray, but not to run to someone. This is what I'm trying to say. We test every spirit, including the spirit operating in those who come to us with information about others. The Spirit of God says, through the Word of God, test every spirit, not just the spirits outside, the spirits inside the church. In your family, what spirit is operating? Because many times we feel it's our family, we could do what we want. You can't. You could, but you're schizophrenic. Because you're reading the word and you're behaving differently in your family. It's, it's, it's got to line up with the word of God, y'all. Church is not just in here. Church is when you get home. Church is wherever you are in the workplace. And I also want to say to those who are so easily swayed by feelings, one of the tricks in this area that Jezebel comes with is this kind of profound truth that seems to be good on the surface and it's appealing to the senses. But at the end of the day, we haven't checked context. We haven't checked meaning in light of scripture. Scripture interprets scripture. And so isolated scriptures will catch you off guard. And you will be tempted like Eve. To begin to doubt what God says. And you will create your own interpretation of the word of God. It's going on today and it's very dangerous saints. This is why we encourage people to come to Bible study. Because what happens is, even if you don't like Daniel, you don't like Ezekiel, you don't like this one, you don't like, listen to me. There are certain things that are said to you when we teach you that you will begin to remember scripture, interpret scripture. Let's take the context of this passage. Because many of us feel we are self-proclaimed teachers of the word of God. I want to remind you that Jesus studied in a synagogue growing up. God, all God and all man with no sin, he studied. Paul studied. So those who declare, I don't need for anyone to teach me. The Holy Spirit will teach me. I challenge you to take that and run with it and declare it as truth. You are a liar because you do not know that scripture will interpret scripture. And I've got to understand that even Paul who studied was taken aside before he was released to go into ministry. Even Moses, who would have studied, was taken aside. Jesus himself studied. We need to understand, if it is available, then there's no question that God has made it available because that's what we need to do. But we are very quick to say, well, you know, the persecuted church, who teaches them? Is you the persecuted church? Listen to me. God will provide for the persecuted church that's locked away in a cave in a different way to us. God might give them revelation more than he would give us revelation because maybe there's nobody to teach them. But I challenge even that conclusion because we've read of persecuted churches where 
God has sent people to teach them and they've said, will you come for hours? I showed you all the video. Will you stay for hours? Will you come back and preach? Can we stay all day and all night because they are so hungry to be taught the word? If you are not taught the word of God, Jezebel will teach you. And that's where the counterfeit comes in and that's where the church in Taratira was challenged. Allowing this woman, Jezebel, this prophetess, to defile the church. I want us to also understand, and I, and I say this with the deepest of understanding and love. That entity will want you to seek the approval of man. And because so many of us are broken and hurting, we want our families and the people in the church to approve of us. And what happens is, what happens is, we begin to compromise God's call in our life because we want to please those who are calling us or not calling us the way we feel we need to be called. So an example I will give you, Galatians 4, 17 to 18. They zealously caught you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always and not only when I am present with you. I'm going to give you some other scripture to help explain this passage. But there is, a, there is a zealous courting that goes on in the churches. I want to speak about a church where the cliques come and the cliques go. And if you agree with them, you're in their good books. And some of us long to be part of a group, to be accepted. We also need to understand that Jesus spoke in the word because we are trusting all these people that we want them to include us. And if we don't, if we're not included, if we are not seen as doing something for the Lord and, and being approved and said, oh, oh, servant of God, you are so wonderful. If we don't hear those things, we tend to allow ourselves to be led by another voice that says you're not good enough you could never do anything when God simply says in Matthew 7 21 to 23 not everyone that says unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father who is in heaven not anybody else's will it has to be the will of God not the will of man it must be the will of God many will say to me in that day Lord Lord did we not prophesy by thy name and by thy name cast out demons and by thy name do many mighty works and then I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me you that work iniquity if you are measuring yourself by the way others are performing in ministry and if you feel that you need to match their standards otherwise your standard isn't high enough I hope you will not be as that person in the end time who thought that they were everything but they were not anything because God said he did not know them you do not measure yourself by others you never measure how you are in ministry by the way others are doing ministry. You measure yourself through the word of God, with the word of God, with the will of the Father. And you might be the only one that is saying no to something in ministry. And everybody else might be doing it. And it seems good, but God told you no. Listen. Because you will go and say yes, because nine of them are doing it. I want to be part of what is going on. You know why? Because it's become our identity. Instead of us having the identity in Christ as a child of God, ministry becomes an identity. And what happens in the end is that you go along that path because others are saying, great, great, come with us. Look at what we are doing. You could do it too. And God has told you no. And if you seek counseling with those who are more mature than you and they're saying no, 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 now is not the season. But others see your giftedness. This can happen to new Christians who are in churches that do not give people time to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. And they say, eh, hey, but you're well gifted. You should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing the other. Saints, the reason why there are so many people leading other people astray is there was never time 
for those who are leading all these thousands and thousands of people time to grow in the word time to mature time for fruit of the spirit to begin to come out and because it strokes our ego and we seek the approval of man sure yeah i know yeah the holy spirit comes down whenever i i pray with people i i i, I know you find you find when i pray with them they, they start to shake and 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 they look like absolute rubbish people wanting to stroke your ego and tell you how gifted you are listen to me nobody should have to tell anybody how gifted they are the gifts come from the lord they don't belong to us what you're telling somebody they're so gifted for the gift is not theirs the gift is jesus's own for his church so what are you what are we saying you're so gifted what that's like telling a bandit like saying bandit this stolen, this property, not stolen, this property that, that, that is in your possession now, how wonderful it is. The bandit did not give himself the possession. Do you understand what I'm saying? He woke up one day and there it was. And you're saying, hey, this, this possession that I'm seeing in front of you, it's so wonderful. The person had nothing to do with how it appeared in front of them. What are you telling them? They're so gifted. We need to learn to talk properly. I like the fruit that's coming out of your life. I find you have more self-control these days. I find you're loving a little more. Hey, I find you're real kind. Can that language become the language of the church? Because we are leading people astray and because of approval seeking and because of this egotistical, prideful marriage between Jezebel and Leviathan that has occurred in the church, we are taking people who God is, yesterday we prayed, we prayed, tell me if I'm not wrong, we prayed, Father, baptize them with your Holy Spirit, pour out all the gifts. My brother, God has poured out all the gifts and we ended with, manifested, with the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, with those, those not my words, we said, pour out all the gifts with the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit in other words we'll know it's poured out because the fruit will come forth so i expect people to say to you you're not getting as angry as you get normally you're not you're not um you're not tending to be as emotional what should not be said to you that is what the church has propagated is you know you're real gifted you know you could real go out there and minister to people Go and minister to people with a nasty attitude and see what will happen. You go outside there with lust in your soul. Ball, you reaching people for Christ and you still into pornography. And let me not say the other word because they have children in the, in the congregation. You go out there with all the fruit of the spirit and see what you will damage people and you will get damaged as well. And this is my point. That is what Jezebel wants. And there is a constant seeking of approval of man and a competition that goes on in the church of Jesus Christ of who is more gifted and who. And if truth be told, you was vomiting seven years ago the same way you're vomiting today with all these demons leaving and all of them come back and pack up because you have no fruit of the spirit to show for it. Saints, and we are turning people away from the church of Jesus Christ because they're saying they're in church for so long and they're still having meltdowns. In the church so long and they're still wrestling with this they are right to say that your answer is well god not finished with you yet listen to me it's time it's like ever learning without getting knowledge and revelation and god is saying today today shift your gaze do not seek to get approval of man seek to be approved by god god approves the fruit he knows his trees by the fruit that's what our focus has to be. I want us to know, in line with that, this desire for knowledge rather than growth and revelation. This is, this is, the, this is the, the thing that's going on today. Growth, we want growth, y'all. We want the fruit to come forth. We want revelation from God, not a set of head knowledge. The word says, 2 Timothy 4, 2-4, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come 
when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. You know what desires are? Emotions. How are feeling? Their own desires. How you feel? Because they have itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. They'll heap up for themselves teachers. Let me explain what happens to those who are more interested in going along with their feelings and more interested in setting aside what God's word says. And you know how I know they set it aside? They doesn't know the word. They say, no, we know the word. No, you don't know the word. You have not studied the word long enough to know the word. There's a time to be taught. There's a time to learn. And what happens here is that they will heap up for themselves teachers. The teacher that will tell them what they want to hear is the ones they will listen to. So if the feeling is, this is how I feel, I'll look for somebody who agrees with me. Because the moment somebody comes and says, you're going along the wrong road. You need to consider X, Y, and Z. The ears uh, start itching more. And apparently what will happen, the scratch from the one that God put in your life to teach you and disciple you, whoever that person might be, not taking that itch away, you're itching. You need somebody else. You need somebody else. And until somebody tells you what you want to hear, and, it, and you could always link it back to what makes you feel better. I find when this person talks to me, I feel better. Listen to me, saints. Listen. I am positive. When Jesus answered back the devil, the devil didn't feel good. I am positive. I remember the word saying, the word is a double-edged sword. It cuts. Have you ever been cut by something? It don't feel good. You need to stop wanting this kind of feel good feeling that comes from when the word corrects and rebukes and understand that there's a whole generation going down the wrong path because they are so focused on self that feeling and self has been merged i want you to understand that in timothy second timothy 3 1 to 7 but notice that in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins led away by various lusts always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth if today you are finding yourself always wanting to lean on your own understanding i am not saying that we don't read the word and study the word and and the lord will show us some things but you up if there's a church community there's a reason to be part of a community this is the reason why the lord provides ways that we can be fed and that we can grow and then we take it and we sit down and we say well lord i'm trying to understand what you're showing me but the self-taught always leans on their own understanding and what happens is we fall into a trap six years ago the same thing you were struggling with you're struggling now never having true knowledge because we do not put into practice what we have learned. We must look for growth. We must look for fruit. If we get caught up in head knowledge, rather than heartfelt change that revelation brings, your chart must change. Jezebel will get us so caught up in our sense of, of, of we are learning for ourselves and we want to fit in with the feel good because after all we come to church to feel good to go back home to feel good no you don't come to church to feel good you come to church to learn what the word of god says and sometimes in learning the word of god you're not going to feel good you're going to be disturbed you're going to be like really and i thought i was doing so well 
But I know, Lord, they're bringing conviction. And I need to apply what I'm learning. And Lord, it could be so hard. And I'm so tired sometimes. Saints, what choice do we have? They told Jesus the same thing. They said to him, Jesus turned. He said, you want to go too? Because it was so hard what he was teaching. When you go into the scripture, it says, it was hard. What he was teaching was hard. And many turned away. And he turned to the disciples. He said, you want to go too? And they said, where are we going? Only you have the words of eternal life. So saints, I don't want to pop anybody's bubble today, but it done already got pop, pop, okay? <laughs> it's hard. It's going to be, but does it mean hard is impossible? No. We've got to stay on the narrow road. We've got to learn. We've got to grow. You've got to make it. You don't want to be in church 20 years and wake up in hell and say, what happened? Because the fruit didn't come forth. When the fruit is coming forth, sometimes you will go through some times when you're struggling, but God will place people to stand with you. Any church that is biblically correct, that is following the blueprint of the Bible, will disciple its people and place people there for those who need help. And I want to say as I close, because I can't finish today, let me give you one more. The family disorder and destruction Jezebel brings. Jezebel misuses leadership and authority and causes destruction in families. When you read 1 Kings 21, 1 to 7, and it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the place, the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So what happened is Ahab spoke to Naboth. And he says, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near next to my house. And for I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth of money. So Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, give me your vineyard for money or else if it displeases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Saints, this is such a serious thing that developed here, but it goes on in families, it goes on in the church. You want to go in a certain direction, you want to do something. Here Ahab wanted something that wasn't his. And was told you can't have it. And what happens is the sulking started. You know when you can't get your own way? You begin to sulk. You get told no. You swell up. You quail up. You want what you want. Whatever that want might be. And what happened here? Instead of saying, look, just calm down and go and repent for wanting the man's thing. She says, why is your spirit so sullen? He's not even eating food. Some of us, we get sullen and say we fast. And you're not fasting. You're sulking and you don't want to eat anything because you tell yourself you're going on a fast to seek God. What you need to do is repent and submit and stop wanting your own way. Whether it's your family, whether it's the church, whether it's on the job. Because some of us as Christians believe we are always right. That's what this entity does. And what did this entity say? What did Jezebel say? You now exercise authority over Israel. Who do you think you are? You don't realize, you don't realize the kind of authority that you have? Says, let me pause here and just say, we have to be careful with that phrase. Do you understand the authority you have? You might be enabling somebody to do something wrong. 
telling them to go and exercise the authority in Christ because they got told no for something that's not good for them. Whether it's in the family, a, ma a husband and a wife are married. You fancy yourself a counselor. You don't know the ins and outs of everything that's going on. If you did, make your life available to them. Be available 24-7. You want to counsel people? Here's what. Have a phone that's always on. Do you understand? Be available for the calls that come at midnight and at 1 o'clock. Because if not, you will only hear half the story at a very convenient time. By one person and not by both. Do you hear what I'm saying? Not easy to counsel people. Those of us that like to, sure, you could share with me. I have one hour. But you are saying you know how this person should be. And then they come and you say, but what is the authority you have in Christ? You pray. Tell any woman to go and pray for the husband who, in her words, is backward and is not doing what he should do. You never spoke to the husband. But you are saying, use your authority. Don't you understand who you are? You say, well, no, this is not the same thing. But since it is, it is. Whether or not you are operated, Jezebel knew that he wanted something that wasn't his. By you not making it your business to find out the whole story, you have already decided to let people know what's going on and how they need to pray for this person. Do you hear how we twist the gospel and end up using soulish prayers that is affecting people in their life and we need to stop it? The sulking when you don't get your own way, but also too, also too, what Jezebel does is misuses leadership and authority so that something that is not God's will will be granted. It's called soulish praying. It's called manipulation. It's called gossip lying praying. I just made up that word. Because your information is not sound. You've passed it on. So it has, you, 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 you need to understand if it's not truth, it's lie. And you're praying about it. I'm trying for us to understand that Jezebel creeps into families. If I'm counseling a couple, I'm counseling a couple. No one coming to give me one story and the next one not going to be part of it. Even if one only wants to try and the other one doesn't want to, I is not taking 100% what one is telling me. Because there's two sides and then there's the truth. You understand what I'm saying? So I am here to tell you that whatever God wants to do in that family ought not to be achieved through fleshly manipulation. You don't know who you are. Well, listen to me. If he do you that again, then you have to understand, yes, he is a Christian, but you know, you're not no doormat, you know. You know the usual spiel. You understand? Or you're telling the man, listen to me, she need to learn submission, you know. You need to understand. You is the head. So you need to just enforce it's fleshly means, y'all. And this goes on. This goes on. You know why it goes on? While our motive may not have been intentional like Jezebel. Jezebel just wanted to just totally destroy anything that had anything to do with God and God's word and God's prophets. We are in the body of Christ. But we are not fully committed to when we help people. We are not fully committed to covering people off, covering them, covering their sins. We are not fully committed to helping them. You know why? Because helping people is a full-time job. So even if you don't have 24 hours and you hear something, just understand, you just get a little piece. They have the whole rest of the story. Hush. Don't advise. Say, think the best and pray. Because guess what? Whoever's speaking to you is hoping you will tell them, yes, you, you have rights. This is what you heard. This is what you need to do. You don't know, y'all. Someone comes to you and tells you something about somebody else. And you feel, wow, that is so wrong. 
You are acting on what one person has told you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we're calling it advice. We're saying, I am in the body of Christ and I'm helping this person. You cannot help the person. You've not asked to see all those concerned with the matter. Hush. Because when you advise people to get what they believe is right in their eyes, by their authority in Christ, you are operating as Jezebel wants you to operate. And it will cause destruction and disorder in your family, in the church, and in the workplace. And as I close today, I want you to understand, I am closing. I am. I am closing. There are those that will say, Rev, why I have to close? We have to close you all the time. I said to the team this morning, when we gathered, I said, you see some of them songs that are coming up on the playlist, they're not on this computer? I want to hear it before we play it in this church. I said, because I don't know what else to say except. No, it didn't affect the baptism. But I picked these things up in the spirit realm. And I say nothing. I just... It does give you a headache. It don't clear the atmosphere. Jezebel leads us to wrong forms of worship and perverts our worship and it becomes entertainment rather than true devotion to God. Because you see, the true power of worship, Jezebel knows. And so what happens? There's alternative forms. And so some of the songs that make their way onto the computer because somebody was listening to it and they felt all moved, doesn't mean it's anointed. Doesn't mean that the words are biblical. Doesn't mean that one demon even when it played, it might invite because your emotions, we mix up spirit and truth with emotions. So I'm just saying, it's not all the music, but I did make the statement. Not one song is to be played in this church unless I hear it. Because there's a lot of contemporary music out there that appeals to the emotions of the young people who are still being set free. And it's not that I'm not being set free, but let me tell you something. I'm 60-something. God has not finished with me yet, but I know enough to know when something is played, if there is a sense of, I want to worship him. And if something is played, if I want to go. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No, nothing is wrong with jumping. Or if it's played and, I'm, and I'm, I'm grooving with it when it's played. That's not worship, y'all. That's not worship. I'm not here to tell you that you can't jump. You all see me jumping. Because sometimes I just want to go down on the ground. And worship him. So I, ju I jump because we don't really have enough space. You understand? But I want you to know. There is a call by Jezebel. For every song we hear. That it is of God. And it is not you all. And it lulls you like a lullaby. Into a kind of a worship. That you just, you know. Saints is the true and living God. For God's sake, we worship Him. There's a difference. And I just want to say, Father, you know, oh God, that we desire. We desire to worship in spirit and truth. Sometimes, Lord, it's even better without the music. Oh God, if we would learn the, the words of the hymns, oh God, that we could sing the hymns. Father, even without uh, the music, but Father, we know there's nothing wrong with music, but help us, Lord, as you lead us, Father, that we will not follow wrong forms of worship. Father, that we would, oh God, as we worship, uh, we would worship in spirit and in truth, that Father, 
our worship unto you will be like incense before the throne, my God, that Father, the devil will not be able to stay in the presence of the saints who worship the true and living God. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' mighty name that everyone here that has received from the series will go back and listen. Lord, we do not want to walk in the footprints that Jezebel has upon the church. Father, we want our families to be set free. We want the church to be set free. And so, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, oh God, move upon your people. Move upon us as pastors. Move upon your church, oh God, that Jezebel cannot stay in the presence of the true and living God in a church that worships in spirit and truth and walks in holiness. Holiness, oh God, and repentance. And so, Father, right now, I thank you as I close that you bless the people. Father, bless them and help them to know that you are preparing a church without spot and wrinkle, oh God. And through your word, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. And amen. Praise. Praise God. Let's stand as we come to the end of service. And we're just going to continue worshiping the Lord as we end by declaring Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yes, and also Lord. the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the parts of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Now Amen. let us go out to be the church by truly loving God and by truly being obedient to him and by always loving one another as we love ourselves. Thank you, Lord. May we always love one another just as Jesus loves us. May he direct our paths. May his consuming fire always be with us wherever we go and in whatever we do because he loves us. And may we grow to love him more and more. The Lord bless you and keep, keep you. you. The Lord make his face shine upon you Hallelujah. and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you Hallelujah. and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.